John 4, and I want to read uh, just four scriptures. And the Lord, I, I, I really, I got like two messages out of this, so it wouldn't, don't be surprised, I might come back and preach out of the same chapter again. It's two different messages as the Lord uh, has given me with this, and uh, we're still praying for all of our people that's unable to be here and those who are sick, and uh, uh, we we still missing Sister Charlotte. We glad that she's doing better, and uh, uh, we want to continue to pray for those that are unable to be here. God bless them to, today. The Book of John four, and we'll begin with verse one. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. I want you to look at that carefully. The people, the Pharisees, when they heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, verse 2, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And then verse 4, he, he, and he must needs go through Samaria. Now, I want to kind of just preach off of that scripture there where it says, and he must needs to go through Samaria. I want to preach just simply the thought, going through our Samaria. Going through our Samaria. Would you just lift your hand and say, God bless the word. Amen. In Jesus' name, can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. Going through our Samaria. Um, when I read this scripture, I began to study into it because it didn't really... I, I, it, the Pharisees, they heard about Jesus and uh, they, they heard about about the disciples he baptized, and there was some controversy here uh, that was going on. There was great controversy because uh, they had a little problem here with Jesus uh, because he was having more bapti baptisms than John the Baptist. Um, and so there's a little issue going on. There was questions about who is he to be baptizing all these people more than John the Baptist. And so there was a lot of questions that were being raised about the fact that he was uh, being baptized, uh, baptizing more people than uh, John. And so we find that while that's going on, there's controversy going on, and uh, there's a lot of concern. And uh, Jesus, he chooses to leave uh, this particular area, and the Bible says he left Judea. And so the people, they, they, they're, they're criticizing his, his teachings and, and all of the things that's uh, been said about the Lord and what he's teaching them and uh, the baptisms. And so they found discomfort in what he was teaching. Uh, they didn't like what it was that he was teaching about. Now, we are living... In those kind of days, and that's what kind of brought me to this place as I began to study this, is we're living in a day and age where people don't like some of the teaching, and they have a problem with what the Bible says. Uh, and so we're living in those kind of days as well. We're living in a very controversial uh, society and world and nation. And so we live in this time and uh, uh, where people, they don't, they, they, they don't want you to tell them that they're living wrong and they're not living right. And it's not just the preachers. I don't want anything to do with something that's going to tell me that I'm doing wrong and, and I should do it this way. But that's what the Bible teaches. That's the Word of God and the truth I preached on Wednesday night about the one thing the devil does not like. If you want to put the devil on the run, then you preach the truth because he's nothing about truth. He don't want anything. His greatest, our greatest weapon against the enemy, the devil, is truth. And so that's why uh, he don't like a church that preaches 
truth. And so uh, he can hang out with anybody, and he'll do all. He'll sit on a pew. He'll he'll disturb. He'll do whatever he can to distract. But he won't hang around when there's truth being uh, preached because he knows that there's truth in the Word of God, and he knows that what God says is the Word. And when God says it comes into play and it comes into existence. So he knows that, uh, that his time is short and he knows what's facing him because God's word is true and he knows it to be truth. And so uh, we, we, we find that we're living in those kind of days and, and, and it's, it's don't tell me uh, that I'm living how I should be living and, and, and that I'm living wrong. Don't tell me anything. I don't, I don't want to know that. And, and so... It'll make people mad. Don't, don't, we, don't we live in that kind of a day? People get mad when you, when you want to pray, when you want to uh, quote a scripture. It used to be it, was, it wasn't like that or any, it, at all. Now people get upset. There, there's, I, I, we, we, this is no uh, new message. This has been going on for some time. It's just simmering in the pot and getting a little bit steamier because uh, we, we know there was push for a long time to take prayer out and the commandments. And, and now, uh, we're, we're, we're try, we're, it's not a fight to keep it. It's a fight to try to get it back in more than ever before. And that's what's wrong with where we're at today is because we've taken God completely out of the picture. And so we cannot afford in these last days uh, to be caught in that trap of not keeping God and His Word and people, they don't want to hear the truth. Uh, the Bible says you shall know the truth and it shall make you free. That's why so many people are bound to addictions. That's why so many people are busted up as far as families and their marriages. That's why there's so many alcoholics and drug addicts. That's why there's so much tension, strife, hatred, and racism, and bitterness. And all of this stuff is because people have... They don't want to hear the truth. Amen? And so they don't want to hear uh, what the Word of God says. Amen? The Bible speaks of this in the last days. People be unthankful. They'd be unholy. unholy. Uh, they would uh, forsake His name. They would forsake His Word. They want nothing to do uh, with the Word of God. And so they don't want truth. And so we, 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 we look at that, and uh, people today... Would, they'll, they'll take church and they'll take a message. Today, people will sit in the pew and they'll, they'll praise and worship and, and, and clap their hands and get excited. Hey, what we did today, that's not a problem. People love that kind of stuff. That used to, they'd be like, these people are crazy. What are they doing now? People do that. Now they worship and they dance and they shout and everything. But what people don't want and it's a spirit, it's a lady of sin, it's a spirit of Jezebel in the book of Revelation. That spirit is... I'll, I'll take all of that, the emotion part of it, but when you start preaching the Word, I don't want any conviction. I don't want a convicting message because then I'm going to have to change my lifestyle. And so that's where we're at today. And so they don't want to hear convicting messages that point out their sins and their wrong living. I thank the Lord that in my life somebody told me how I should live. Amen? That somebody pointed out what was wrong. Amen? And I needed to get it right. Amen? Amen? So it's a spirit. Everybody say a spirit. In the land today. And that spirit is, if I don't like it, I'll riot, I'll protest, and I'll do whatever I can to not accept that. Amen? That's a spirit. People are like, oh, that don't have nothing to do with church. It has everything to do with church because it is a spirit. Right, right. Amen. And so we need messages that are inspired by not the world and what we like, but we need a message that is inspired by God. I'm going to tell you what, that was not on the plan, Brother Adam. That was not in the plan. I, 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 those songs I prayed about, I said, well, we, this may work. We, we, I, we started singing about the glory of God, and that one song, I, I, I was already in the wrong key, and it's got a million like chords, and I, it's like difficult to play. But I thought about we're here to glorify the Lord, amen? And Sister Julie was uh, uh, singing about the only real peace, amen? And we were putting this thing together, but then, see, what we did is we kind of stepped aside and got out of the way and let the Lord have His way, 
Amen. And I like that. Amen. I, I like God. I love it when God busts up a plan. Amen. Uh, tomorrow I go in uh, and they want us to turn in lesson plans for what we're doing this week. And they say stick with the plan. Amen. Uh, and so I, I, I try to do that. I do stick with the plan. Uh, sometimes we don't get through with something and have to push it over. But when it comes to God, amen, I love it when God busts up a plan, amen, because he's got something better in mind. He's got something that he wants to do, amen. Well, we're just going to sing one course, and let's get on with the preliminaries, and let's do our offering. We don't want to forget the offering. It's building fund, and we need to do those prayer requests because we want everybody to get prayed for. Uh, and so we'll just, we, we know that song God is saying we need to worship a little bit, need to praise me. So I love it when God just blows a plan out of the water because he's got something what it is is we got something that we're going to do but God says no no I got something I want to do right now amen and so I love it when God just gets involved amen and so we need messages that are inspired by God I, I tell you what when I first started preaching uh, I, I, I would I'd get my own notes and stuff and, and I'd have it all together and then my grandpa would look at me and he said, one of these days, you, you're going to learn. And I'm like, what's that? And he said, you're going to learn, just you, you got to back off and let the Spirit take over. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I said, I dread that because, boy, I'll be lost as could be. But what I didn't understand is it's not about me, but it's letting God take control. And it's so much easier when God's in it, amen. He just takes control. He said, you're going to get up there and you're going to have it all together. And you're going to have all your little notes, and God's going to say, no, I want to do this tonight, and you're not going to have any notes, but that's all right, because God's going to be speaking and giving what you have need of, amen? So we've got to do that as individuals in our lives. We've got to do that. And so what I'm praying for, and I, I, all this week I said, God, I said, give me something that I can bless the church with. Let, them, let me feed them something, Lord, but let it be something that don't just tickle the ears and don't let it just be something they say, oh, well, that was a really good sermon. I, I, I got so mad. Once. Well, I say mad. I didn't get really mad. I don't get too mad. I, I was in Kentucky, and I just preached my heart out. It was it's been years ago, and uh, Sister Barbara, I, I got up there, and I preached, and, and uh, uh, there was a lady. She come up. She don't even go to that church. She was a visitor, and so uh, there, uh, we after service, she said, you did such an awesome job. You sound like Joe Osteen. I was so upset. I don't want to preach like Joe Osteen, you know. I, 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 first of all, I can't smile that big. And I don't have a big enough hanky, you know. And so, and, and everything's okay. We're all going to be just positive today, you know. It's more to it than that. That doesn't feed. That, that, don't, that don't do nothing. I, I, you know, uh, I, I got to have the word. I got to have something from, from the Lord. I got to have the mind of God. And so uh, we, we need messages. I, I prayed. I said, God, just give me something that is inspired by you, something that you want me uh, to preach. And so we don't, we don't need humanistic wisdom. We need God. And so uh, could I tell you today, more has happened. I've heard several preachers say this. More has happened over this past year than 10 or 20 years combined and put together in this world. I'm telling you, there's been everything that's happened. And so these things that have been happening in our land today, could I tell you, first of all, it's a disgrace, a dishonor, and it's very dis disappointing to God. God is not pleased. God is not pleased with the direction that things have been going. Jesus was witnessing the things similar to today. The message, I'm, I'm about to get back to it here, but I just want you to understand what I'm preaching about uh, with this Jesus when he went to Samaria is very similar to what we're dealing with today. And so it did not stop the message and ministry of Jesus because Samaria didn't want anything to do with his teachings. It did not stop the ministry and Jesus from going and teaching and baptizing. Uh, they had said all manner of things and done all manner of things, and, and, and it was not a place uh, that was appropriate for the Jews or the Jewish culture. But Jesus had a passion, and his love for mankind and the society that we live in today, 
I don't like the things that are going on. I don't like the evil in our land and the sickness and the sin and strife on every hand. But it should not affect our passion. It should not affect our walk with God. It shouldn't affect us. But it should open up our eyes to what is going on and un- unveiling in the Word of God. Amen. The Bible says, look up and your redemption, your, for your redemption draweth nigh. This is, the, this is what he's talking about. That, that Lord, the Lord is coming quick. He's on his way when you see the things unfolding. So we should not lose our passion. If anything, you should get a greater passion. Amen. For the kingdom of God. Amen. You should get a greater uh, uh, love uh, for the house of God. You should have even a greater a desire to see soul saved. It did not stop him from going to a place where he was not wanted. Uh, during this time uh, of Jesus, there was much prejudice. I want you to watch how this parallels to the day and age we're living in. During this time, Jesus, when he was headed to Samaria, there was much prejudice between the Jews and the Samaritans. At this particular time, Jeroboam, their leader, introduced to them false gods. He he introduced to them different types of culture, sacrifices. He, He introduced to them false priests. He introduced to them leaders who would lead uh, the the area and lead the city. He introduced false worship. And so the Samaritans created a basically counterfeit God and a counterfeit religion is basically what they did, which the Jews hated. And that's a good thing. We don't need to like something that is not of God. We don't need to worship anything that is not of God. I don't like the junk and the things and the sins and the evil that is going on our land. But I cannot hate the person. I can only hate the sin and the evil and the rebellion because that's not the person, but it's the spirit that is in the person. And so Jesus looked at this, and and he saw this, and the Jews just had a serious problem with it. The Jews had no dealings whatsoever with the Samaritans. They took that. Don't yoke yourself. Don't be unequally yoked, Scripture. Seriously, they weren't going to yoke them. And I I believe that. I I think our children, I think we need to stay away. I don't want my kids hanging around somebody that don't want anything to do with God. Amen. Amen. But what I'm saying is we got to still love that person. Amen. And so Jesus, uh, they they were taught to stay away. Don't go in that area. And so the Jews had no dealings whatsoever with the Samaritans, and they traveled out of their way to avoid them. They went out of their way to just stay away from them. Have you ever tried to avoid somebody? Because you do, they probably talk your head off. Or you don't have to raise your hand. You know. Anybody ever done that? Hey, Amen. I, I remember one time there was this one guy, we was in Walmart, and I said, oh, no, if we run into him, we'll never get out of here. So we went the other way. And then we come down the aisle, we ran smack into him. And yes, it was about another 30, 40 minutes. Now, you're looking at me like I'm funny or whatever, like crazy, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, you if sir, oh, no, I, I, if I run into them, I'll be another 30, 40 minutes. Praise the Lord. And, uh, but anyway, they were trying to avoid uh, just being in that area or going anywhere because these were bad people. They were bad people, and, and so it, it was a shorter route. Isn't that amazing? The, the place you need to go, that's going to be where those individuals are. And, and, and here's these people. that It would have been shorter in their travels to go through Samaritan's shortcut. But they would go way miles out of the way because they didn't want anything to do with the, the Samaritans. And so they would travel miles away to avoid uh, this evil and this corrupt culture. And I, and I would understand. I'd be like, all right, all right, uh, son, if you're going to... Uh, go out to eat tonight with a friend or something like that. Uh, don't go through Samaritan. Yeah, I, I would say it too. Go the outer skirts, whatever, because you don't want to run into those people. They bad. They're bad news. I can understand. I can see that. And so you got to understand uh, the the people and their thought process with this. They were just bad people. It was a bad society, bad situation. And so they would bypass the city and they would travel by uh, the Jordan River. And so it was odd and it was confusing. When the disciples were with Jesus, and it was odd and confusing when Jesus violated their thinking and their belief by saying, I must go through by way of Samaria. (gasps) What? You said the dirty word, Samaria. 
God help us if God violates our thinking sometimes. Well, God, I just don't know why this has to happen or God, I, I think you ought to do it this way, Lord. If, it, if I was you, that's the problem. You're not him. So we viol- God help us that we violate what God is thinking. His ways are not our ways. Amen. And so Jesus just said it. Well, I've got to go uh, through by way of Samaria. And so God destroyed their way of thinking. I wish God would destroy our way of thinking sometimes. Especially when we think we got things figured out. Usually when I think I got it figured out, that's when the bottom falls out anyway. And God's like, okay, I got you. This time, let, listen to me. Okay? So God destroys uh, their way of thinking. He destroyed it. And so when he would speak in favor of having mercy and love, he was talking. Here's the disciples preaching about mercy and love. They're on the seashore. Oh, we got to have love. we got to have mercy. Ooh, like that. And then God says, okay, Let's, I, must go, we must, I must go to Samaria. No, no, no. Don't, no let's, we don't show mercy and love there. That, 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 you can't do that. You can't do it that way. It's, and God was trying to teach them a lesson. For them, not just Jews, but Gentiles and others, God said, I got to do it for everybody. It's not, the Jews had a serious problem. They thought that this was all for just them. God help apostolics and Pentecostals not to think that it's just for us and not anybody else. It's for whosoever will. Amen. I've got some friends that I want them to have what I have. Amen. But I'm not, sometimes, you know, some people think in their minds, apostolics and Pentecostals, that we're the only ones going to heaven. We might not be the only ones going to heaven with the way we act or our feelings toward our spirit, our countenance, you know. So we got to be careful. And so, Jesus was saying, no, I'm for everybody. He said, I, 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 I die. I'm thankful that he didn't just die for the Jews. I'm thankful he did die for the Gentiles. We had a chance. We get to be a part of this. And so the Jews did not go by way of Samaria, so they could not relate to this. The disciples, Jesus was still teaching. He was always teaching. He, he, you know, I thought about uh, this teacher. She, uh, she said, I think I'm going to retire this year. And uh, somebody said, no, you'll be back. That's all you know is teaching. Because she just comes back every year. You know, I don't care what she's, I don't know how many years she's got in. It could be 50 or 60. I don't know. But she still comes back and she teaches. Jesus was always teaching. He never retired. He just kept teaching every day. The disciples had to learn something new every day. And so he's trying to teach them that it's not about just the Jews. It's about mankind. And so 1 Timothy 2 and 4, if you have that, you'll turn within the word of the Lord. It says, who will have all men to be saved? And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Amen. We need all men saved. I want everybody saved. Hey, there should not be a person. We go down, go down town and say, oh, that's sorry, good for that person. I hope they go to hell. Oh, no. That should not. Now, there's some people who's like, you know what? They're in for a rude awakening. They don't get themselves straightened out. I just say, God, have mercy on their souls. You know, I pray for those. The Bible says pray for those who despitefully use you. And so God was addressing humanity's function. He was against their dealings. Look, don't don't think for a moment God was just going to accept what was going on in Samaria. God was addressing humanity's function. He was against evil. He was against sin. Uh, He was there to die for sin. He was against corruptness. Don't think for a moment that just because nothing's happened in this land today and God hadn't just took... That took judgment on, placed judgment on the world in America, that he's just sitting there saying this is okay. That's not the way God operates. God is doing everything he can to draw men to him. And he's reaching for them. And so he's not accepting this. Amen. God was making a statement that I don't condone uh, and accept what's going on in Samaria. I've come to save you from your own destruction. Amen. Man should not be lost. God said, I'm coming there because I want you saved. I'm coming there because I love you. I come, I'm coming, uh, even though you don't love me, I, I, I love you. And so this is the same reason for his going to Calvary, amen? And so it was so man uh, should not be lost. That's why God went to Calvary, so no man should perish or be lost. And so thank God uh, for allowing us Amen, to go through some things. 
You should thank the Lord for allowing you to go through some things so others can be saved and not lost. Amen. We must go places like Samaria. What I'm preaching about today is sometimes it's like I'm not going to Samaria. I'm not, I'm not doing it this way. I, I, I got to do it the way I know to do it and the way I like to do it. But sometimes you got to go by way of Samaria in order to obey what God wants you to do. Amen. And, and so I look at this pandemic. I'm sick of that word, but I'm sick of, uh, of we look at this today, and it's like, I don't know why we're having to go through this. It may be God's will that we go by this way, Samaria. Amen. Jesus said, if I'm going to reach anybody, there's going to be somebody that's going to be reached that already has turned and been reached. There, I know people that's already been stirred and been touched and been saved through this, but we had to go by way of Samaria. Amen. I'm getting to my message here. I don't want to go there. The Jew said, I don't want to go there. But I must go, I must go there. I'm thankful that God looked at Calvary as Samaria and said, I don't want to go to the cross, but I've got to go there. I've got to go through by way of Samaria. I've got to go by way of the cross. I've got to die for their sins. I've got to die for their lives. Amen. And thank you, God, for going by way of Samaria. Going by way of a Calvary, amen. We get ready to celebrate an Easter coming up. I'm thankful that he went to the cross. There's not a day that don't go by that I don't thank the Lord for his blood, amen. And so we got to go places. we got to go through some Samarias in our lives. I don't want to go there, but I must go through there sometimes, amen. Samaria, by definition in the Hebrew, means watch mountain. It means watch mountain. And so prayer is our watch mountain. Amen. Established in his word is our watch mountain. When you're established and you're firm in his word, that's the way that you go through Samaria. It's watching. It's a mountain. You're watching as you go through. And so you have to pray while you're going through Samaria. It, 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 you have to pray and you have to seek God as you go. When, the, the, another interpretation of watch is to pray. Amen. Jesus said in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, could you not just watch and pray and just stay with me a few, just an hour? I mean, they were all asleep. They couldn't even stay alert and wake up and pray. And so it is our, it's our watch mountain. Prayer is the way you get up on that mountain and look over things you can see above. And so in our going through Samaria in our lives, we have to watch and we have to pray. It's our watch mountain. It's our prayer tower. Another interpretation uh, for Samaria is prayer tower. And so Matthew 26 and 41, Matthew 26 and 41 says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We got to watch it. We got to go through the Samaria of this world. We got to go through the Samaria uh, of some of the evil in our land. We got to go by way of Samaria. I wish we could bypass it. We, we go to Nashville, we go to Kentucky to my, visit our relatives, and there's a, there's a bypass there, Briley Parkway, which you know takes you to the opera, opera land it used to be, but there's a place we used to go smack dab in the middle of Nashville. I can remember as a kid, Dad would drive straight through there. It was the only route to go, but now they got this little Briley Parkway, this little bypass where you can go around it and save much more time, and you don't have to go through the city. There's less traffic, and you don't have to go through all that, and the kids... They're like, I didn't get to see the city, or I didn't get to see, you know, uh, uh, they, they got this uh, building, it looks like Batman or whatever, it's got the two big, uh, like, you know, things like Batman, and so they said, we didn't get to go through the city, and, and they don't realize, because they just sitting back there just riding, but when you have to drive and deal with traffic, that's a different thing, and so I like it when I can just pull off there and just take that little bypass and go around it, and boy, it puts me right in, and, and I miss all of that stuff. And so we like to in this life just to, just to bypass some things. Some people think, oh, when you live for God, oh, God just, he, he, he just helps you out and you bypass a lot of the things that could be put upon you. Uh-uh, it's usually just the opposite, amen? Because God trusts you enough, you got enough in you, or are you sure that God's like, nope, I'm going to send you through Samaria because you've got what it takes to witness and be an outreach to somebody. But he said, you got to watch and pray. You got, if not, you're going to enter into temptation. And the spirit is always willing. But boy, that flesh, you got to kill that flesh. 
Hey, look, when you leave here, hey, we've been shouting, we've been praising, we've been worshiping God. You'll go home and you eat a taco or something, and, and you'll say, boy, this has been a good service, but I guarantee you get up in the morning, and that devil's going to be up ready. He's already had four or five cups of coffee before you got up, and he's ready to defeat and do whatever he can to get you discouraged, but you got to overcome that flesh. You're going to have to go after him with truth, word, and you've got to go, with, go after him with authority. You need to meet him at that coffee pot and say, look, bud, let me tell you something right off the bat. I'm in charge here because God is going to be with me today. You do what you got to do, but God's going to do what he's got to do. I'm telling you, you got to go by way of Samaria. Praise God. But we are going to have to go through Samaria. The world and society that we live in today is Samaria. If we are going uh, to be a light and to reach the world and the lost, we're going to have to go through some difficult places like Samaria. Amen. We're there now. America. Amen. The Hebrew children had to go through the fire. Amen. To get through their Samaria. The fire were faith in order to find faith, in order to find faith, in order to find favor on the other side. They had to go through that. Amen. They had to go through it to find the fourth man. Amen. And so the children of Israel had to go through Egypt. You know the story. Amen. Their Samaria was to reach their promised land. Amen. Oh, we want the promised land, but we don't want to have to go through Samaria. But sometimes it takes Samaria. You got to go through that God can condition and get you where he needs to be to be able to experience the promised land and the miracles. You give the Lord a praise. Amen. <laughs> praise God. Amen. Psalm 68, real quick. Amen. Psalm 68. Amen. It's seven. Amen. If you get a chance... Read 51, the book of Psalms. You're talking about an encouraging book in the Bible. This past week, uh, I, I just happened to just stumble on a few things. and Read 51, you'll be blessed. But I want to read Psalm 68 and verse 7. O God, when thou wentest before, God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, Selah, the earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Verse 9, Thou, O God, did, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thy inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation hath dwelt therein. Thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. They had to go through the wilderness. That was their Samaria. Their Samaria, it was their the wilderness, it was their Samaria they went through in order to receive. Have you noticed in the Bible that God don't just, He, he don't just give handouts and giveaways? You got to go through some things. You got to stand in line to get it. You, you got to wait your, your, your time, and that's just the way God. Uh, 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 the Bible says, wait upon the Lord, He'll renew you, your strength. Amen. That's where you grow in God. These people just want to get a, get a miracle and get an answer, just, just get a blessing like that and be done. Uh, it's the, grow, it's the, the going through the toil and the, the, the tough and the difficult. That's where you learn to trust and love God. That's when you learn more about God, amen, than you do anything else in your walk with Him. I, I don't want to have to go through some things in this life. I don't want to have to go through some, some areas. I don't want to have to go through situations. But God is speaking to us today. You have to in order to, to receive the promises of God. He said, he said endure, amen. He talked about, he said, uh, he, he talked about that he would be with us, amen, uh, even to the end of the world. But you gotta, you got to press toward the mark. The high calling of God that you got to press to that 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 mark, that that goal in sight, and so God is speaking to receive this. If you need a blessing today, go after it, Amen. But you're going to have to go through some merit. Wait a minute, I'm going the shortcut. I want this blessing now, but you're not going. You may take the shortcut, but you may not get your healing. You may not get your blessing. You may not get what it is you've been asking for. You may have to go through some merit. I don't want to go through those things, you know. Amen. And so the world, regardless of how it looks to us now, is still valuable to God. God still offers hope to a dying and evil state that this world is in. We're going through this place and this time that we're living right now that's very difficult. 
but it is where God, for whatever reason, wants the church to be. I don't know, I've, I've seen like over the past couple weeks, I've just had to just say, I've got to accept that. For whatever reason, this is where God wants the church. Oh, we, yeah, but we, we, we should have two or 300 people, and man, there should be revivals, there should be blowouts. Man, we should be having all kinds of this and all kinds of that. And, 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 but for whatever reason, this is where God wants the church to be. And so for so long, we bypassed and shortcutted some things. I don't have time to preach on that. A lot of people's like, well, I'm not going to church tonight. I'm not going to be faithful to this. I'll just stay. I, I, there's always opportunities. Now people don't have the opportunities they used to have. They've tried to shortcut it instead of go through Samaria. And they realize now that, oh, my goodness, I, if I would just went by way of Samaria, maybe I would be a different person. It's where God wants us to be for whatever reason, the church today. The church has never gone through this before. We, 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 we must trust God's plan for the church. We must go by way of Samaria. It's no turning back either. We got to keep going. God was stepping over the boundaries of the Jews here. His feelings, their feelings towards Samaria, he was telling them the way they should be feeling towards Samaria. He wasn't accepting their unrighteous living. I don't accept people's unrighteous living. I, I don't have to give in to their ways. And people can say, well, I don't believe that. And we can do it this way. And I don't see why you do that. I don't accept that. Amen. I'm not going to give up because somebody else uh, don't see it. And because they don't, they don't want me to see it their way. And I, I'm going to keep doing what I know to do for God. Even if I have to go through and deal with this stuff in Samaria. But I'm just going to keep preaching and be a light. Amen. But he was trying to be an example. Jesus said, I got to go there. I got to be an example. These people need an example. Could I tell you, America today needs an example. We, we, we need people. We need truth in our land again. We need people that will tell the truth and be honest again. Amen. And the only way, people's like, well, I don't know why these people lie all the time and people do this and all. Because they're not Christian people. Well, anybody can say they're a Christian, but you got you to gotta have the infilling of God's presence, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost on you, in, inside your, your life. And, you, and, and, and so people are not going to just, you know, uh, say, be what they're supposed to be unless they have something, something changed you. Something changed me. So they, the world needs a Savior today. Amen. They, they, they're living in sin. They worshiped other gods. Yes. They lived corrupt li lifestyles. They were about themselves. How are they going to know about the kingdom of God unless somebody told them? Jesus said, I'll go by way of Samaria. I'll tell them. Amen. Somebody hear what I'm saying today. They, they, they needed someone to bring light upon what they were doing. They need somebody to bring light upon their situation. Our world needs life. They need light. They need truth today. But how are they going to get it unless somebody tells them, amen? Praise the Lord. Romans 10 and 14, real quick. Romans 10 and 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? God wanted them to know that he was on a mission. And his mission included people that were disliked, that were dysfunctional. Amen. Nobody's going to be perfect. That's why they got to have God. Amen. My Lord, if we didn't have God, look where you would be. Look where you were already at and God brought you from it. Come on, you had to go through Samaria. No, no, you were in Samaria, and somebody came through there and said, I got to tell you that there's a different way, amen, that there's a God, amen, that can change your way of thinking, living, and acting the way you are. Thank God somebody come in my Samaria a long time. Thank God somebody came in your Samaria when you were living, you, you were a rough, no, maybe no good person, and, and your life, everything was in ruins, but God put somebody in Samaria and preached this word. Thank God for the preachers that came through by way of Samaria, or you might not be where you're at today. Amen. Praise God. People despise, they hate it, they mistake, they're mistaken. Amen. They don't realize what they're doing, uh, and so they don't realize what they are doing at Calvary. And so uh, Jesus is the whole time saying, "Forgive them, forgive them." Forgive them, Lord. And so, and so Luke 23 and 34, Jesus, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and they part, they part his raiment and cast lots. Isn't that amazing? 
God was forgiving them. He was on the cross repenting and saying, God, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He was reaching out to them. And then when he got through saying that, what did they do? They just went ahead, parted his raiment, and they began to cast lots and gamble. I don't care how much truth, how much you preach, somebody's still going to reject it. They're still going to live the same way. But there's, got, there's somebody that can hear this today. Praise God. God is all about trying to save us. Did he go to Samaria with you somewhere in your life? Did he do it for the sake of you? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Amen. I'm bringing it to a close here. God's plan is always different from ours. The disciples had to be in shock. Question, why are you going through Samaria? That, you, you can't go there, Lord. He had other reasons to go by way of Samaria. Because there was a woman there that needed God at Samaria. A woman at the well. There was people that were lost there as well that needed God uh, there at Samaria. I think in today's world there's an attitude that it's about the godly and only the saints of God, the according to God, you know, uh, that, that's all he cares about is the godly and ungodly. No, God is reaching out for the ungodly today. He, he's reaching out to the one that don't believe in him today. Jesus was saying, I've come to call sinner to re sinners to repentance. God wants us to be in his family. Can I tell you, he wants us to be a part of his family. The family of God. I think we have a wonderful family today, a church family. I, 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 I hear people all the time that uh, they said, I don't have a family. And they get in church and it's like, man, I never had a family until I came into the church. We're adopted, amen, into his family through his blood. Don't you like that? We're, we're adopted. I'm thankful that, that, that we were adopted into his family. The blood atones and the spirit adopts. Amen. So there is not a time that we should be looking and saying, God, what have we done wrong? You can stand today. Maybe you've done that. I've done that. Lord, what have we done wrong? What's America done wrong? Have we we've not done enough? Have, have we done something to make you mad? God, what, 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 why, why have you forsaken your people? Moses, they did that too. Why have our lives been put on hold, it seems like, for the past year? We're coming up on almost a year now with everything. And God is looking down and said, nope, this is just part of going by way of Samaria. This is just part of my plan to reach the lost. If you bypass and shortcut things and you just only go and reach out to people that love you and you love them and they're already in church and all, if you don't go to Samaria and just go around all the time, how are you going to reach those who are dying and going to hell that's in this world? we got to go through Samaria. We've got to go by way of Samaria. And I don't know. You know, everybody says, wonder what the future holds. <laughs> At this point, I don't really care. I just am going to cling to who holds the future. That's all I'm really worried about right now. Amen. Amen. My, 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 uh, my antennas are not, you know, trying to pick up what's going on at the White House, but I'm trying to pick, out, pick up what's going on at the church house, amen. I got to get more in tune to what's going on with God and His Word today, amen. And so the best way to reach somebody is by way of Samaria. You're going to have to go to some places you don't want to go. You're going to have to, you say, Brother David, ooh, I'm not going to a bad place. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you're going to have to go uh, down that street of pray a little more. Oh, Brother David, I, I pray. Yeah, but it's just not getting the job done. We're going to have to pray some more. You're going to have to go down in the neighborhood that you don't like to go. It's a bad neighborhood where you have to fast. Oh, I can't do that. I got to have food. I got I, I to function. I, I can't survive without, without eating, you know, five meals a day. or I mean, three meals a day or whatever. No, you got to fast. The Bible says some things can only come through prayer and fasting. If you want something bad enough, you'll fast. You'll give up. Uh, you you, you got to do whatever it takes to get whatever it is that you need, but you're going to have to go by way of Samaria. you got to pray more. you got to fast more. you got to read that word more. You're going to have to worship more. you got to give more. you got to do whatever you got to do 
uh, by way of Samaria to reach that loss. You got to be a greater witness. Amen. So don't complain about Samaria. Just ask God to help you where you're at. Amen. To teach, to, to witness, to be an example. Amen. Amen. Our daily lives are our brightest testimonies. Don't give up on your testimony. Don't give up on what God has given you. Lift up your hands today, God. We know, God, that the journey is by way of Samaria. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to get through these challenging times. God, maybe the only glory and maybe the only excitement, maybe the only time we'll, we'll really shout like, God, maybe we think we need to shout might be over in glory when you come back. God, I don't know, but God, we're going to continue on. We're going to worship. We're going to praise every way that we possibly can. God, in the days ahead, God, God, teach us, Lord, thy ways. God, let us not grumble. Let us not complain, God. Not, let us not grow weary and well-doing, God. God, let us not give up on everything that we've been trying to do for your kingdom, to further your kingdom, God. Oh, God, help us, Lord, these, these days ahead. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise?